As an Apple enthusiast, WWDC is one of my favorite days of the year, and I especially love it on the years where Apple decides to treat us iPad users. And folks, this year, they got some good stuff for us. I'm actually pretty excited. Even if I don't love all the changes, it's just nice when Apple remembers to actually invest in the iPad. And so as not to make this a half an hour video, which I've done before and did not go well for me, I just want to walk you through the major changes in this release so you can see what you have to look forward to this fall when the final release comes out for your iPad. So I'm actually not going to say a ton about the new design in this video, mostly because this video is going to be too long as it is, and you're going to see the design across the OS as I'm going across the various features. So one thing I want to call out since I'm using the Magic Keyboard for most of this is that, like many of you have wanted, we do have a new cursor on iPad OS. You'll notice here, it's an arrow, not quite the arrow from Mac OS or Windows, but it's an arrow, and it's no longer the morphing circular cursor we've had since 2020, I think it was, Apple introduced it. Things still highlight, but the cursor itself doesn't change, which is probably something a lot of you have wanted, but makes me a little bit sad. And unfortunately, if you're like me and actually liked the old cursor, there does not seem to be an option to re-enable it. So let's get to the main event, which is the new multitasking and windowing for iPadOS 26. Now, this actually is not a replacement for Stage Manager, which still exists in the system. It is a new third option in the multitasking settings. So if I go into settings and go into multitasking and gestures, you'll see on the left of here, we have our full screen apps, which is the standard default iPad experience that everyone loves. And then on the right, we still have Stage Manager. And then in the middle here, we have our new windowed apps option. So let's see how this starts. It starts just like normal. We'll go into Safari and apps by default still open in full screen mode. But if you look in the bottom right corner, there is a grab handle, just like in Stage Manager. And I can drag that grab handle and the window resizes. Okay, so far nothing new. But here's where things get more interesting. In the upper left hand corner here, replacing our old three dot multitasking menu, we now have the traffic light buttons from Mac OS. And they work just like you'd expect. So when you tap them, they, they expand. If I hit the green button, the app moves into full screen. I'm gonna just resize it with the grab handle for now. The yellow button minimizes the app into the app icon. And the red button closes the app. I reopen it. And notice when I reopen the app, it reopened in the same size and position that I had it in in the beginning, which is a really, really nice improvement. Back to those traffic lights. So if I expand the app again into full screen, you'll notice the traffic lights are gone. They're no longer in the upper left-hand corner as they were before. This brings us to another new feature related to multitasking, and that's the menu bar. So if I swipe down from the top, and it's, it's a really short swipe, it's not a big swipe, you pull down this new menu bar. It looks very similar to what's in Mac OS. My traffic lights are on the left, so there's a number of options that are surfaced here that you're able to access. Now this does replace the old hold command to show keyboard shortcuts functionality we had in prior iPad OS versions, but I think this is gonna be probably a bit more discoverable and it's more like what most people are used to. Another thing the traffic lights offers us is window snapping. You kind of saw this as I've been going through it, but if you kind of hover over the traffic lights, you'll see a variety of window snapping options. So for example, I can take Safari here and snap it on the left, just like that. And then I could pull up, let's say settings, which is notoriously never worked with Stage Manager. It kind of resizes now, but it, it is also able to be snapped. I can snap this right on the left. But as you probably saw, there's more than just those two options there. You can construct layouts in a variety of different manners. So if I want to move this to the top, I can do that. It's really just that simple. And the last thing I want to go over related to multitasking is that we have finally gotten rid of, at least in this mode, we've gotten rid of the old four app, four window limit for multitasking. So what does that look like? So I'm going to start opening apps. So let's uh, open music, resize that. Let's open calendar, we're at three apps now. 
to open photos. Again, apps open in full screen by default, but you see when I resized it, it stayed in the same workspace. In Stage Manager, I would have been kicked out to another workspace. It's all just kind of living in the same workspace here. So I can open more apps. I'll pull in podcasts. Uh, let's see, pull in shortcuts. So you can see I have way more than four apps open here. And the windows are all overlapping. Some windows are completely overlapped. None of that window moving logic from Stage Manager that tried to help you not lose your windows. You're free to cover whatever you want, however you want, just like many of you have wanted since the beginning of Stage Manager. So now that we have all these windows open in our workspace, it's really easy for things to become cluttered. So since we're going down the Mac OS path, apparently, Apple's also added App Exposé to iPad OS. So what I'm going to do on the trackpad is do a four finger swipe up, which normally would just bring you home, but in this case, it's going to give me a bird's eye view of all the apps I have running in my workspace. I can slide over using the trackpad and get to the other apps I have in the background as well. If I click on or tap the, the home screen from here, I almost said desktop, you'll notice the apps part to the side. And that is so that I can pull in other apps to my workspace. So I can pull in reminders here. And it's part of my workspace. Again, nothing got kicked out. It just gets added like you would expect. We also get a number of new apps in iPadOS 26, which we'll quickly go over. First is one that's been long awaited, even though I'd kind of forgotten about the app, and that's the journal app. So the journal app, comes to iPad with a iPad optimized interface. We'll pull it in full screen here. And it works just like I assume the journal app works on iOS. I haven't actually used it, but if I come in here, I can type a journal entry. I have different formatting options. Oh, journaling suggestions, okay. I can pull in different media, I can pull in audio. I can bookmark this, move it to a different journal. Again, I'm sorry, I'm not a journal app user. Of all of Apple's devices, the iPad is the one where journaling makes the most sense. So it's a little baffling it's taken this long to get it here, but it's here and it looks not half bad. Okay, next new app is going to be Preview. Now, if you've used Mac OS, you're familiar with this app. Preview is Apple's app for managing and annotating and editing PDFs. It comes to iPad OS. We get that new document browser experience we got in iPad OS 18. And by default, it will surface the PDFs it finds in the Files app. You can tap into a PDF. You have some of the standard options here. Pull in Apple Pencil if I wanted to annotate something that was written pretty poorly. It's worth noting the palm rejection is not working very well in this app at all. So I'm trying to write on the screen and you see it's being wonky. But I imagine that worked. Again, beta one. I can edit forms. I can do selection. I can rotate. I don't know why it zoomed in when I did that, but that button lets me rotate and I have more options here for rotation. Interestingly, visual intelligence is here. That's not something I saw before. I can go right to a page and a multi-page PDF. Just a pretty decent preview experience. I'm not the heaviest preview app user on the Mac, but I guess I'm glad it's here. Next up, let's go to my personal favorite and that's the phone app. Now I'm one of these weirdos who who takes most of his phone calls on his iPad. Yes, with my AirPods, but my iPad's usually the device I have with me, so taking calls is really just easier there. We got the redesigned phone app that comes to iOS and macOS as well. You have your recents list, it's editable. Because we have the new phone app, we also get contact posters for the first time, which is nice. And we even get a dialer that's not full screen. Hallelujah, look at that. 
I am so excited about that. You guys have no idea. And last, cannot forget this, is the new Games app. Now this replaces Game Center, but is essentially supposed to be a gaming hub on iPadOS. It'll pull in your activity from App Store games and Apple Arcade games, stuff like that. Yet I'm not a huge gamer on my Apple devices, so I kind of zoned out during this part of the keynote, to be honest. But you see here, we have the games I've been currently kind of playing, games I've been playing. I can invite people from my contacts to play a game. Top played, recommendations. It's actually not a bad looking app, all things considered. We can get to our Apple Arcade titles. If you're a subscriber there, this is for pulling in people for multiplayer games, presumably. And then I have a nice view of the games in my library. Yeah, there we go. That looks about right. So honestly, it's a little more useful than I thought. I can't end this video without talking about the improvements to the Files app. Now, if there is one app people complain about the most on iPadOS, it is the Files app. And we are getting a couple improvements here. So going into the app, first of all, one cool thing you can do, you already see I have this set up, is you can add folders from the Files app to the dock so you can quickly access them. So if I were to take one of these folders, for example, drag it down to the dock, space opens up, and I can add that folder. And you can imagine if I actually had stuff in these folders, then they would fan out, just like on Mac OS. And if you tap and hold, you actually have more options here. And you can do the grid view or fan view. And if you want to remove it from the dock, you just do that in options, and it is removed from your dock. I don't think you can just pull it out. Yeah, it doesn't seem to work the same way as Mac OS. So that's pretty cool for those of you who wanted that. You're also now able to customize your folders if you want. So if you tap and hold, bring up the context menu. There's a new option here that says customize folder and tags. And you can of course change your tags if you're a tag person, I'm not really. But then you're able to take these images actually I think they're SF symbols, and you can customize that particular folder with one of these. It's a lot to choose from. I hope they add some kind of search. Light bulbs. And you can even pull in emoji if that is your jam. Now according to the website you're supposed to be able to customize the color as well I do not see that option, so I'm thinking it's not yet implemented in this beta. But hopefully it's coming. The Files app also adds Open in or Open With, which lets you assign an app to open a particular file type. So if I come to this PDF, right-click it to bring up the context menu, you'll see I had this Open With option, and my options here are Preview or Apple Books. So I can choose my default PDF viewer and editor if I want to here. And then lastly in the Files app, we also have a customizable list view. So if I go into list view here, first the columns are resizable. You can drag these to, to space this out how you want. But then if you come to the three dots here, you can actually toggle sections on or off as you wish. So one more thing I can sort of show you is the new support for background tasks. Now iPadOS has always had a level of background task support, but what Apple's describing here sounds more real robust. Now to really demonstrate this, apps have to implement it. So I'm gonna do the best I can here. So I'll show you what it would look like. So I'm gonna go ahead and download uh, one of these large files. Start the download. And you'll see a live activity pops up that shows me my download progress. So if I exit out of Safari, it just keeps going. And then I think the idea is that if I want to keep track of all of my background tasks, I should just be able to do that from the lock screen. 
and now it's working. You'll be able to see what long running tasks you have in the background and cancel them if you find their impact in performance. You know, one of the issues with background tasks on a laptop OS is that for some users, you know, if your machine starts slowing down, you don't really know where or how to figure out what's consuming your machine's resources. Exposing background activity this way, instead of something like Activity Monitor, is a very iPad way to do it. So there's a lot more to iPad OS 26. There's all the features that are shared across the systems that I didn't even really talk about because I didn't want this to be an hour video. So there's more to come on iPad OS 26. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you like the video, and make sure you check out slatepad.org where I'll be writing about iPad OS and the other post PC OSs over the summer. So make sure to check that out. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate you and your time, and I will catch you in the next one. Take care.